We're going to start the liturgy just like we did last week with Father Jason, but this week will be a bent on how the deacons dress and how the deacons pray before they prepare for liturgy. Um, so what I want to do today is reiterate some of the same things that Father Jason talked about last week. Um, what is this called? Do you remember? Tassic. You knew. And what does it come from? Where did it derive itself from? Where? Toga. It derives itself from a toga. And as it has made its way up to this century, it is in a very formal cut, thank goodness not fitting, um, garment. And that represents myself as an ordained deacon and my colleagues calling, uh, who are deacons and Father Jason. So very much the same as what Father talked about last week. And then he talked about the amos. And what's the purpose of the amos? Do you remember this? And where it came from? Anybody? It's a head covering. This is what the Roman soldiers used to wear over their heads. And, you know, remember, I'm not an Italian. I'm a Scott Irishman, so we do things a little different. But um, they used to wear it under their helmets to help with the sweat. Then it became part of the dress of the um, clerics, moved its way from this way down to here on my shoulders. And the purpose of the amos is to help, not disguise, but to take the visual of my ordination away, to cover my collar, so that we're just here to serve and be, uh, be servants of Christ. So, this is hard to do without a mirror. What I'll do is, uh, I should lose some weight. <laughs> well, let's just tighten the knot. It's like my staff, they don't like me to stand behind them typing. They can't type all of a sudden. So I'll tuck this in over my collar. And as Father Jason said last week, everything that we touch and do is, is related to the liturgy. Is, there's God in it. Next, what's this garment called? Does anybody know? Nice and loud, I can't hear you. Alb. Alb. For Albus, for Latin. It's white. What's, it, what's the white represent? Yes, I'm very pure. It reminds us of our baptism. If you're an adult or even a child, we clothe you in white. And as a deacon, my vows are all about service. I'm a servant. Um, it says in the prayer book that we are, deacons are agents for the bishop. It always kind of makes me feel like a spy. But. And then we work with the local parishes and take direction from the priests. Uh, rector or priest in charge. What is this called? Censure. Thank you, Anasi. And this is to remind me, well, let's read it. 
I forgot to welcome you to Rome, lovely Rome. This is to remind me that this, actually these were used for slaves. But now it's a meaning of being a servant. Everything that I put on, everything that I do, reminds me of who I am as an ordained deacon and what my function is, not only just liturgically, but outside of this building. Um, I have some prayers that you can, you can read those. We're, we're past those at that point. Just go ahead. Let's start with the amos. As Deacon Paul places the amos over his head, Lord, set the helmet of salvation on his head to fend off all the assaults of the devil. As he puts on the alb, purify him, Lord, and cleanse his heart so that washed in the blood of the lamb, he may enjoy eternal bliss. As he tied the cincture, Lord, give him with the cincture the purity and extinguish the fleshly desires that the virtue of continence and chastity may abide within him. As Deacon Paul puts the stole around his neck, Lord, restore the stole of immortality, which he lost through the collusion of his first parents, and unworthy as he is to approach thy sacred mysteries, may he yet gain eternal joy. As he puts on the Dalmatic, Lord, endow him with the garment of salvation, the vestment of joy, and with the Dalmatic of justice as it ever encompasses him. Thank you. I was asked to, be, to, to say what is the meaningful part of the liturgy for me. And the meaningful part is robing, because it's preparing me to think about what's to come and what I'm supposed to be receiving. Another part of the liturgy is the deacon is supposed to set the table, and the deacon is supposed to clear the table. That's our job. Some people describe us as the maitre d', the head waiter, um, the person who makes sure that all things run smoothly in the uh, liturgy. And sometimes it doesn't, but you know, that's okay. The stole, for me, reminds me of my bounding of my vows as a deacon to the church. This happens to be a handmade stole that someone made for me. So, I kiss my stole to reflect on my um, ministry. This is the Dalmatic. The Dalmatic comes from around the fifth century. It used to be just described as a woolen outfit tunic fitting closely. Now when I was a Franciscan, the old guys would tell stories about they used to have to wear a, 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 a wool tunic under their habits and it itched and it was hot and their habits were whole but it was a memory of what they were about these originate from Dalmatia as the church grew and we're a part of the Western church the Eastern church also uses a Dalmatic but they became very ornate through the centuries and they became very heavy to wear but there was one good thing about wearing a heavy uh, garment. A lot of churches were not heated, so you were warm. Unfortunately, we get overheated in here. But it um, comes from Dalmatia. The Roman church kind of dropped it from where we come from, our cousins. And it came back into the fashion later on in the centuries. It's not ornate. It doesn't have icons all over it. It's just very plain and simple. It also matches 
the season of the year. If you've noticed, our Dalmatics always follow. Just like Sister Karen's, um, my brain just stopped. Chasuble, I thought I was thinking Jezebel. Chasuble, <laughs> don't know why. Um, we match. Uh, these do not belong to the deacons. Uh, deacons will have personal stoles that were made, but there's also stoles that uh, go with these, but they're part of the church. Stoles are, are gifts that people give to deacons either at ordination or anniversaries or for whatever reason. Um, so those are personal things. So they, they um, go with the deacon when the deacon leaves, or the deacon can leave them for someone. Quite the package. <laughs> no sign of my ordination is in here. You don't see my collar. Everything's gone. I'm stripped. I'm here for the Lord to set the table, get it ready for the Eucharist. Now, if this was in Scotland or Ireland, I would have probably a nine foot kilt. These were used in the past to travel with to shelter with. A nine-foot kilt did the same thing. Um, that was their house that they slept in, and that's what they survived with. I have to put a little bit of Irish in here and Scottish. Any questions? 